Welcome back to Adventure and Pete. It's glad to see you here. So, if this is your first time here, make sure you like the video. Comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear about and subscribe. we got a lot of great content coming, a lot of great content on the channel, so be sure to check it out. So, what are we doing today? We're actually doing the final adjustments on our OMC Cobra engine. So, it's hard to figure out what to do because, honestly, OMC actually has a few different generations of the Cobra. So, you got from the 86 to 88 generation you've got the 89 like this one here specifically then you got the 90 to 93 that's just all in the cobras then from 94 and on you've got your king cobra and your uh volvo pentas all very similar in operations and adjustments but there are slight differences especially when you get into the 2.3 liter some of the cables can be routed in different locations like instead of coming out of the back they come around the front all the operations and adjustments are relatively the same but you do run into a fall, a few small fine tuning adjustments that makes a difference between what generation you're going with. So here we're gonna talk about 1989 specifically with this OMC Cobra and this 1989 four winds boat. This does have the 5.8 liter V8, so it's pretty common. And the setup is usually the same for all V6s and V8s. So if you're not sure, definitely pick up a manual. They do help to give you the exact fine tune adjustments. Otherwise, this video is a great help to get you started and get you on the road. So, let's get to it. If you are looking for manual options, these C-Lock manuals have been very helpful for me. They have all the specific dimensions, and they cover all of the OMC Cobra engines, not the Stringer engines that you find in the previous generation, but the OMC Cobras. And I have a lot of points in there. I have definitely a lot of bookmarks on things that are specific to my engine and my combination that I'd like to look at. And it has everything you need to know with dimensions. So if you're looking for a book, that's definitely a great option, I think. So first thing to note when we're talking about shifting dimensions, this lower shift cable, if you just replaced it, the dimension between the end of this sleeve and this center point should be 7 and 9 16 inches on 89 and later engines. The 88 or 86 to 88 Cobra engines, they call for a seven and five eighths inch dimension between that end sleeve and this center pin. So that's just something to note when you're working on these engines that it does matter on that distance. Honestly, that 16th of an inch is a big factor when you still have plenty of adjustment in your actual shift cable up here, but that's what they call for with these. Seems like most of the internet seems to get away, get away with a seven and nine sixteenths inch and roll with that so that's just a note and then also the dimension between here and the center of that trunnion because that trunnion is free floating you can spin it and adjust it it's called out as six and a half inches on some later king cobra models they call the distance between that end nut and the side of that as 11 and 6 11 16ths of an inch which i think still equates to six and a half inches in the end so just be aware that some Cobra models, the King Cobra specifically, call out different dimensions themselves. So we're going to start with this. We just did this lower cable and this is dimensioned properly. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this back off and we're going to verify overstroke switch placement is in the right place when we did this upper cable to make sure everything is properly adjusted before we even get to the lower drive itself because the lower drive will have to be put back on to make sure we can do the final adjustments down up here. So you have to have the drive on to do the final adjustments. But for the initial adjustment with this, you have to have the drive off and use the plate to set the lower location. And this is gonna be on there for the final adjustments as well. So we're gonna get this off, set over stroke switch, and then put the drive back on. Now that the out drive has been reinstalled, Everything's back to where it should be out there. We do start with this shift cable, the lower shift cable disconnected. And we take the throttle on the control cables up top and push all the way to full throttle. What that does is we're verifying that that cam right there, that little switch is in the center of that cam to verify that that is cycling in the proper direction. As you can see, we're right where it needs to be. So that's a good thing. We're all good there. So. Next thing we're going to do is reinstall the shift cable and verify those alignments. But you always got to make sure that that is in the proper orientation to start with. So now what we have is back there. We've got that lower shift trunnion in that position because we started at six and a half inches. 
just gonna throw a cotter pin in there for the time being to make sure it doesn't fall out while we're doing the testing but you pull it outwards to engage the propeller and drive and then you jump down there and make sure it's fully engaged in gear or somebody else does it for you and once you do that you check to make sure that with this fully extended it slides right in there that shows we are in the proper position where it needs to be if that's good the next step is moving into testing reverse to make sure that is properly adjusted as well as a note if this did not go on there properly like this that means something was off with one of our dimensions that we had originally set when we had set that lower shift cable so if this did not work obviously the upper one is set good because that's why we set it in the middle of that cam switch that verifies that system when we verify that lower cable that's when we do the initial setup with a holder down down below and center this from here to the end of that that sets that length so we verify that system is good and we verify the other system is good so if this does not go on I mean something is off but if we were off just a hair that trending right there is where I would do your adjustment where you just got to spin it forward or backwards to make this centered on there because obviously your shift cable is not going anymore and it has to be in that location to be able to work with that sensor so that trending is where you adjust it forward or backwards to make sure it falls on the pin where it needs to be so now that we can put the cotter pins in there just to verify that location and we're going to verify reverse as a way of verifying if you have the forward adjustment gear properly as well is when you're pushed all the way your stroke there's really no play left in this you can check your over over a travel switch right here you go up it's actually really hard to make it go up and down it just clicks really easy but you got to make sure it always goes to center so that's one way to verify that your electronic shift assist is properly lined up for the forward gear itself just a good way to double check now this is full reverse on the throttle controls itself went outside and made sure the propeller was locked into gear so what we're looking for is no play no movement everything's nice and tight your esa that we're using to verify it goes that way easy and then this way is stiff easy stiff but it always goes back to center that means everything is in play and everything's adjusted properly so that's how you verify it because esa is really the ultimate thing that decides to make sure that you're in the right place so this is definitely doing better than what it was because we didn't have those controls before and the last thing we got to do is verify that the overthrow switch or the overstroke switch or reverse is lined up properly and that is you can see that little bar right there it's actually not in the center so just like when we do in forward gear it needs to be in the center that one needs to be adjusted to be in the center as well to make sure everything is in proper orientation so we're going to adjust that put it back into the center of that little switch and everything should be good to go so if yours is out of adjustment just like mine 3 8 inch wrench right there on that little cam you can loosen that up and then adjust it to the center like mine is now and then tighten it up this is still going to operate the same as it was before nothing's going to change with that that was just making sure that was in the proper location so that is how you properly adjust it everything right here so easy enough so as a note if you do need to get this ESA adjusted properly for the reverse gear. The adjustment is done at this slot itself where you move this pin up or down on that to give the proper tension you need for the ESA to operate as it should. So obviously down there, that trunnion is how you set the forward gear. This is how you set reverse gear. This plastic adjustable trunnion up there for your upper shift cable, that is how you set the main stud for the uh, over travel switch so the overstroke switch sorry so that's how you set the main stud for the overstroke switch that's part of that adjustment so you don't actually play with this once your overstroke switch adjustment is set you have that lower trending right there for forward this is reverse and this cam gets uh set for the overstroke switch when you have it in full reverse gear so that is all the adjustments for these bracket assemblies so 
that's all there is to it. They're actually pretty simple systems to work with once you're used to how they work and how they're meant to be adjusted. So if you follow the procedure for it, it's it's located in the C-Lock manuals or you can find it online or just watch this video because hey, that's great information right here because I did the digging for you to know how it works. So pretty simple systems, easy to adjust. They're very mechanical and very straightforward. So obviously once you do all the testing here, everything should be good to go. Definitely do a water test. Make sure everything's shifting properly. Do your testing that you go through normally. But as you can see, everything's working properly on this one. Very quick, simple adjustments. So hopefully you like the video. Comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you want to hear about. And subscribe. We got a lot of great content coming. A lot of great content already on the channel. So be sure to check it out. So remember to have a great adventure.